That's amazing. Like it feels like I'm every time I turn around, I'm doing another one of these weekly pick videos. And that's what it really feels like. Cause man, the weeks and the seasons, the seasons, they just go by like this, man. That's crazy. And I think you find like as you get older, just time goes by faster and faster all the time. Like it just seems to slip away. But surely you did not come here for the rambling of the Schleg Daddy about life and time and the precious commodity that is time and valuing time and its importance. You came here for my weekly picks. So let's get into that, shall we? Let's talk about my picks for week four of the 2020 NFL season. But before I do that, make sure you smash that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, click the bell so that way you can be notified of future videos. Because what the hell, why not? It's the fun thing to do. Share this video. Let other people know. Maybe I can help some people win some money. Who the hell knows? Uh, last week, 9-7 and seven in picking winners straight up, 10-6 and six against the spread. For the season, 33-15 and 15 picking winners, 28-20 and 20 against the spread. So an okay, adequate start to the season. You know, not anything that's going to make me a millionaire or anything like that, but like I said, maybe you guys trust me in one of these picks and it'll help make you some money. Then it has certainly been worth your time and my investment. Uh, so let's talk about my actual picks for the week. Uh, Thursday night, Denver against the Jets. There was no doubt even going with Brett Rippon, who actually, by the way, going into that draft, I was actually kind of high on Rippon. I had like a second to third round grade on him. And he had some great, mo good, very good moments and some ugly moments in that game, but the Jets are the Jets. And even against a depleted Broncos offensive team, they still found a way to give up 37 points because Greg Williams is a clown and should be barred from the league permanently, and Adam Gay should have been already fired. And the fact that he hasn't been fired is absolutely astounding to me as of the time of this recording. So, of course, I was going to pick the Broncos to win, and of course the Broncos won. So thank you very much, Vic Fangio and team, for that. Transitioning over to the early games on Sunday, uh, the Colts with Phillip Rivers travel into Chicago at Soldier Field to take on Nick Foles and the Chicago Bears. Give me the Colts to win minus the two. The Jaguars travel to Cincinnati to take on the still technically winless Bengals, but the Bengals having a little bit more life with Joe Burrow as their quarterback. The Bengals are actually favored by three in this game. Interesting that they're basically getting home field advantage money when you have no fans there. That's interesting. Uh, I do like the Bengals in this matchup. I think it's time for Burrow to get his first win in the NFL. I'll take the Bengals minus the three. Uh, Cleveland travels to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Cowboys with that tough loss last week in Seattle. Uh, the Browns now sitting at 2-1. and one. He's trying to kind of fly under the radar. Maybe they're not quite at the Ravens and Steelers level, but they're saying, hey, if we hang around, expand it for them. Stick it in. We can get into the playoffs. We can get in. Get in. Get in. And what you get in? Whatever. No. What's going to happen? Just get in. Um, and the Cowboys are fortunate because the NFC East is easily the least when it comes to divisions in the National Football League. God awful. Um, so one and two doesn't really hurt them, you know, because they're still dominating, <laughs> so to speak. I like the Cowboys to win in this matchup, but I like Cleveland to cover the four-and-a-half-point spread. you got the Saints traveling to Detroit to take on the Lions. You're talking about a Saints team now that's one and two. I like this as a little bit of a get-right game for them, even though Detroit's coming off of a road victory against the Cardinals last week. I like the Saints to win, but I do like the old traditional Matthew Stafford backdoor cover for Lions plus the four. Got the Seahawks traveling to Miami to take on the Dolphins. Give me the Seahawks minus a six. You got the Chargers traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers. The Chargers are without several starters. I like the Bucks all day minus a seven. Baltimore travels to Washington to take on the Redskins. Baltimore favored by 14 here. And this certainly seems like the type of game that you sit there and say, man, Baltimore is going to light them up. And maybe they do. But maybe this is exactly the type of game that's a little bit of a letdown on the schedule. Um, yeah, I'm going to pick Baltimore to win, obviously. But I actually like the Redskins to cover the 14 points here. Call me crazy. You certainly could feel comfortable with doing so. The Cardinals travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Give me the Cardinals minus the three. And then at the time of this recording, it looks like the Vikings and Texans, a matchup of only three teams, was largely a pick -em. I'll take the Texans to get their first win of the year because the Vikings have stunk, and I see no reason for that to change. The Texans have not been great, but they've also played three really good teams to start off the season. Like, hey, how you doing? Here's Kansas City. Here's Baltimore. Here's Pittsburgh. Good luck with that, Bob! So I think Bob gets his first win of the year come Sunday. In the late Sunday afternoon games, you got the Giants traveling to Los Angeles to take on the Rams. Rams is 13.5-point favorites. 
You know, I always sometimes shy away from these really big spreads, but the Giants really are god awful. So I'll take the Rams minus 13 and a half. The Patriots travel to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs in what certainly is a marquee game. Bill Belichick versus Andy Reid, Cam Newton versus Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Chiefs are six and a half point favorites. Chiefs getting a lot of love here from the betters. I like the Chiefs to win, but I like the Patriots to cover that six and a half point spread in Arrowhead. And then you got the Bills traveling to Vegas to take on the Raiders. An interesting Bills team, undefeated. Had a big lead against the Rams last week at home, but then almost coughed it up, but then came back and won. Um, I like the Bills in this spot. Give me the Bills minus the three. Um, Sunday night. Oh, oh, God, that's right. That's this matchup. Wentz and the Eagles against, I'm assuming, Mullins and the 49ers. Oh. 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 Pick some winners for some of these primetime Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night games, didn't you, NFL? Didn't you? She me Christmas. Um, looking at this, there's probably absolutely no reason to pick the Eagles. And I'm still going to pick the Eagles. Got to gotta go risky somewhere. Got to try for some big upset. Give me the Eagles plus the seven. The Monday night matchup, you've got Atlanta taking on Green Bay. I'll take the Packers minus the seven. There was another game that was originally scheduled, but due to a COVID outbreak, Pittsburgh versus Tennessee has been suspended, or not suspended, excuse me, postponed, delayed until I believe it is week number seven. Uh, so we won't have that game this week. But those are my picks. The 15 games for this week, already starting off 1-0. and It's off to a good start. We'll see what happens. Uh, as always, you're welcome to go against me with your picks in the, the comment section. I'll try and put my picks for the week in the description box. So that way you guys can hold me accountable to them, certainly. Um, but another week. Looking forward to some more NFL action come Sunday, Sunday, Sunday.